Two years. Two years AEW Dynamite has been a thing, and this has terrified the pants off me. Do not worry, I am still wearing pants. But where the hell did that time go? I may as well get a shovel and start digging my own grave. If you're saying, Simon, that is hyperbole, you're right. But what a wonderful 24 months it has been, and AEW reached into their back pocket, and good grief did they give us an episode of Dynamite that made us all go oodalally. But maybe there were some things that weren't so oodalally, so yes, hello, my name is Simon Miller. Welcome to Ups and Downs, a show where we give the good bits an up and the bad bits a down, and given the day, we shall turn our attentions to All Elite Wrestling, and let's find out what it did. The start of the dynamite was absurd. Seriously, I want tests done on the Young Bucks, on Kenny Omega, on Brian Danielson, on the Jurassic Express, on Adam Cole, on every other single person who participated in this, because I don't believe they're human. They cannot be human, it doesn't make any sense. But yes, we were having this eight-man tag, and if I had told you two years ago this was going to be going down, you would have walked up to me and kicked me right in the groin and then tried to win some kind of film award. But just imagine that I had gone, oh, Daniel Bryan and Adam Cole are going to be in this thing called AEW. You'd be like, don't you use such language in front of me me, and then we pow down I go. It was real though, and it was sublime. And it brings me back to this position where I don't know what to do with my words because words can't do this justice. Like Jungle Boy and Nick Jackson kicked things off and there we go, 100 miles an hour. Eventually the jungle tagged in Christian Cage, which meant we got to see Christian Cage versus Adam Cole for a little bit. And I was like, oh, wow, wow, hey, that's very exciting. So it was just like taking a needle of joy and sticking it right into your face. Eventually Kenny Omega tagged in after the Young Bucks had kind of been distracted from the outside but then Brian Danielson tagged in as well and the crowd just lost their mind because of course they did within a matter of like two months AEW has turned this into like one of the best face off ever he then tagged in Luchasaurus so this was like a love merry-go-round and I suppose the good guys then heard the tag clacks and ha because they all got in the ring and started doing their moves but unfortunately throughout this carnage the referee got a little bit like oh I don't know what's going on because Nakazawa and Brandon Cutler did their thing, that allowed the Young Bucks to grab Christian and give him an indie taker on the outside. And look what's happened to my hands. I have glued them to my head, because honestly, this was one of the sickest bumps I've ever seen. The story then was that our heroes were down to three guys, and it was almost down to two, considering Jungle Boy then got his ass spanked. I regret saying spanked, I shouldn't have said that. But of course, eventually, his hands set on fire, and he got the hot tag to Daniel. Son, you know the rest. And sure, this was a spot fest in many ways, as some people like to say, but who the flub cares? If I go to a restaurant and they say, oh, sir, what we're going to do is we're going to sit you in this seat and we're just going to fling pizza at your mouth for the duration of your stay, I'd be like, my word, keep me here forever. That sounds fantastic. We got some more Danielson Omega after this as well, so it was Christmas come early. And then, of course, because we had a bunch of guys, eventually they were all in there and it was just move, 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 move. And I calmed my hands down and I went and laid down. I mean, it really was like watching some sort of firework display. And yes, at one point, there was a botch when it came to a powerbomb. Now, just a couple of things. Number one, if you actually rolled your eyes at that and said, oh, I can't believe they did it. I hope when you got your exam results as a child, you had done like really well in 99% of all of your subjects, but in 1%, you dropped the ball a little bit and your parents were like, oh, you disgusting child, you have to leave the house. Also two, they're human beings. They're allowed to make mistakes. What the flub is wrong with you? Although to be fair, we don't know if we're humans. I asked for the test, what, like three minutes ago? And nobody cared to do it. There was an awesome near fall after after a Panama sunrise on Jungle Boy, I was like, oh my gosh, that came down to the last second. And then very sadly for the kid from the woods, he got hit with a BTE trigger from all four bad guys. And that was obviously it for him. He was dead, one, two, three. Seriously though, this was so good. I think my own life peaked. That doesn't even make any sense. John Moxley was then cutting a good promo in the back. Of course he did. He's John Moxley. He's all like, man, nobody wants to take me on a normal fight. So now I'll do a ladder match and I've got a kid at home and my kid is crazy. No idea what he was talking about there. But he just makes you want to see a fight. Happy CM Punk then arrived. I mean, who doesn't love this guy up? He was just so nice about Philadelphia, given that was the location for this evening show. And even said when he was wrestling here as a young boy, he earned a lot of money. So that was good. And then decided he was going to offer them a little bit 
bit of a treat. Either he would buy them a bunch of Philly cheesesteaks or they could watch him wrestle. So of course everyone went, yeah, do a wrestle. So he's gonna do a wrestle. I was kind of hungry when I was watching this, so I was hoping for the former before I remembered, wait a minute, I'm not in Philadelphia, so that's not going to work. And he actually put a challenge out to Danny Garcia and they are gonna have a fight on Friday night. I love this story. I love CM Punk goes through all the young guys because you know, eventually one's gonna be him and it's gonna be like, oh my gosh. Ron Anderson has totally lost his mind too. I mean, last week is all like guns, guns, guns. And now he's turned to fire. But we saw this vignette where I think Arn was outside Cody Rhodes' house where he was just burning a bunch of his clothes. And eventually Cody came out like, man, drunken uncle is back. Would you stop this? And Arn Anderson was like, oh, I don't like you anymore, Cody Rhodes. You have to burn your tie or something. And Cody was like, you know what? I will burn my tie, but only because you pissed me off. So seriously, somebody needs to go check in on Arn Anderson. Here's the thing with it all though. I am so damn intrigued. I never expected this relationship to go down this pathway and I don't know where it ends. I don't know who else gets involved, but it does make me want to tune in. And if you can do that, you have won. So it's get it up. Bobby Fish then signed with AEW. Good. Do you know how much experience he has and how we can use that experience to help the young pups in AEW? The answer is a lot. This was a very smart move. We also had dueling videos here because he is going to take on Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship. And Bobby Fitch was all like, oh man, I'm going to boot you in the head. And Sammy was like, I'm the TNT champion. Hey, Fuego del Sol, I bought you a new truck. And I was like, Sam, what are you doing? You can't buy him vehicles. He doesn't know what he's doing with them. He goes and bets them against Miro. They then squared off and you could tell that AEW had a packed show because they didn't get that much time. But this was just a really good and a really solid wrestling match that kind of let you see another tie to Sammy Guevara is getting it up. In case you've never seen Bobby before too, we ensured to establish the fact that he's like a real fighter and he can kick your flipping head off. So he kept trying to kick Sammy's head off and sometimes he connected, although thankfully for Sammy, his head didn't come off. Guevara got back into this after he did a standing Spanish fly and I had a moment, I was like, that's just a move these days. Oh, how far we've come. And we also had a falcon arrow off the top rope. Do you know how dangerous and scary a falcon arrow off the top rope is? No, you don't, because later on we were going to see even more death defying maneuvers. Wrestling in 2021 is crazy. There was a little tease that maybe Sammy was going to have the shortest TNT run ever, but come on now, that was never going to happen. So eventually he grabbed the fish and he gave him the GTH. One, two, three. I had a jolly good time. I think the best part of all of this, though, may have been the aftermath because of all the people out came America's top team because they decided they wanted to kick Sammy Guevara's ass. And that is exactly what they did. Stupid Fuego came out to try and help but that was about as effective as me wearing a wig and going, what are you talking about? I'm not bald. But Paige Van Zandt got in Sammy's face and then Scorpio Sky kicked the crap out of him, as did Junior Dos Santos. Well, I can't get over this. I'm like, oh, it's former MMA champion Junior Dos Santos just being a professional wrestler. Somewhere our timelines have absolutely been mixed. Somebody then absolutely needed to make the save because these guys were going to be killed. And of course it was Chris Jericho and Jake Hagar. We just did the old wrestling thing here. They ran out, they fought everybody off. And next week, not only are we going to do this match, but yes, the men of the year will be joined by Julia Dos Santos. What is happening? Where are we? And how do I get home? The acclaim then wrapped in our direction that they're going to be taking on the Lucha Brothers on Rampage for the AEW tag title. So I'm sure that will be good. And then Tony Schiavone lived up to Tony Khan's big announcement earlier in the day that we had a major surprise. And we did. And what was it? Well, we have a brand new women's championship. It's known as the TBS title, which of course is the women's equivalent of the TNT title. And I just think this is really smart and really good. It means you can get more females on the show. It means you can have them fighting for something on TV. It's absolutely the right thing to do. And we're gonna have a tournament to crown the first ever champion. I think it should be Ruby Soho. We will have to find out, but it's getting it up. Darby Allen then took his hand and hit the sympathy button. I don't think that's the noise a sympathy button would make, but what a great show. Because it all happened during a sit down interview with Jim Ross. If you cast your minds back to when good old JR did this with Mankind, I kind of got a similar vibe from it in the sense I was like, oh man, now I know so much more about the Darby Allen character. This is based off the fact that MGF had taken things way too far last week, so Darby wanted to put it in perspective. The reason he only paints half his face is because he kind of feels like 50% of him is dead inside because of everything that had happened to him 
as a kid with his uncle who, yes, did pass away after a drink driving accident when Flippy Darby Allen was in the car. He also said that it meant these days he can't really trust or respect anyone, which of course makes his bond with Sting even greater and that MGF doesn't understand the war he has just picked because of course Darby Allen has already faced death in the face. I got that wrong. I didn't mean to screw it up. He then came out for a match as well, which was a really nice segue. And he was taking on Nick Comoroto, which was a bit weird. But in many ways, it was just kind of a squash. He hit the coffin drop. He got the victory. I thought this did the world of good for Darby Allen, who didn't need it to begin with because he's already over like Rover. Up. The fallout was absolutely the best bit as well because QT Marshall got in there, who in my opinion is vastly underrated. He understands his role so much. And he gave Sting the diamond cutter. So Sting just got up, shook his head like a football had just been kicked into his garden and he gave him the scorpion death drop. I will tell you this for probably the 39th millionth time. I really love Sting. The Dark Order are officially okay too. Oh, thank the flubbins for that. But it also means the reason we had a bit of dissension was to tie into a story that paid off on the Brody Lee Memorial Show. And I'm sorry, that just gets a massive round of applause. How the hell did they come up with that one? Also, man, I had a tear in my damn eye. And while there was a little bit of like, oh man, I'm still so mad. Anna J calmed everybody down. I love this group. They make me feel warm and fuzzy in my tum tum. Dante Martin then arrived. And oh boy, did he screw up. Because he was all like, man, look what I've been doing in AEW recently. I've become a problem for the locker room. And as such, I want to challenge anyone in the back to come out here right now and accept my fight. And this did happen because the lights went off and when they came back on, there was Malachi Black. And I bet Dante Martin was like, I didn't, I didn't mean you. Can we go and pick anybody else? Black spat the mist right in his face as well and booted him right in the skull. But what I'm most worried about is when the lights went off again and then came back on again, Dante Martin was nowhere to be seen. So where the hell did he go? What the hell did Malachi Black do? He then got the mic and said, I accept your challenge. Oh, we're actually gonna do Malachi Black versus Dante Martin. I just need this. I just want this in my life. I didn't know until this second, but it's good to have this kind of information. Oh. Ricky Starks was then out. And while I know this has been delayed due to certain injuries, we do just need to get to Ricky and Brian Cage fighting over the FTW title. It's just the law of diminishing returns. Eventually, you want to see it. But Rick was all like, oh man, I was going to have a street fight this evening, but Brian Cage didn't even turn up to work. Which meant, of course, out came Brian Cage. He tried to break up Ricky Starks. Team Taz saved him. All of this was fine, but as I've already stated, we really need to get to this voice. Sheeta then returned to AEW Dynamite. And as we found out last week, she was going for her 50th win. AEW had even made her a lovely little trophy in case she was victorious. And this was a nice touch because, of course, you were like, well, if they've made that, she will get the victory. <laughs> And then she lost. She was taking on Serena Deeb as well. And these two put on an absolute clinic. I mean, they had a bit of wrestling to begin with, but they cancelled each other out to the point Sheeta was like, oh, good work, old chap. And she extended her hand. So do you know what Serena did? Just slapped her around the face. And do you know what I did? I laughed. Because deep down, I'm a bad, bad person. Deep hit this cool neck breaker thing over the ropes to get back in control. But Sheila didn't like that. So she was then doing the aerosplane spin and hit a missile drop kick. And eventually we were just going transition, move, reversal, transition, move, reversal. I mean, these two work really well together. Sheila got the upper hand again when she smashed out a power slam and a falcon arrow. And when that didn't work, she took Deeb's head and just started to near over and over again as if she was offended that Serena Deeb's body wasn't in multiple bits. I think Deeb realized this too as well. She was like, oh my gosh, my head's actually gonna come off. So she raked Sheeta right in the eyes and while Sheeta was all like, oh, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes. Deeb was able to lock in the Serenity Lock and it gave Sheeta nowhere to go. She tapped out. I was then laughing again because yes, I am just a dick. Cause Serena Deeb left straight away. She found that trophy and just went smunk and she smacked Sheeta over the head with it. There's no humor in this. It shouldn't be funny. I just thought it was such an asshole thing to do, but this is getting it up. People then tried to kill Darby Allen. What are we doing to this man? I mean, sheesh. But he was told in the back that MGF had laid down a challenge for next week. So Darby was like, okay, I'll take that on. When all of a sudden a bunch of masked men jumped him. And honestly, once again, they wanted him to die. Not only did they lawn dart him into this railing, but somebody, who could it possibly be, gave him an F10 onto it as well. 
And this was like the Christian bump from earlier. I turned to everybody's dad. I was like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why aren't we protecting these people? Somebody else who very much looked like Maxwell Jacob Friedman then started to choke Darby Allen with a skateboard. And yes, this of course was the pinnacle who just did a number on Darby. And there you get all the people out there are going, I can't believe the pinnacle never get together. Well, they're together and now they're a bunch of would-be murderers. This was a very, very effective angle. I think Leo Rush was then watching a different show because he was back in this new business character going, Dante Martin, I saw what happened earlier. And bro, I think you need some coaching. Why don't you come under my wing? And I was like, Leo, you shouldn't be worrying about coaching him. You should be ringing the police. We don't know where his body is. I like this though. I like this a lot because Rush is really good at this stuff. And when I kind of envisioned Rush and Dante Martin together, my body said yes. Quick interview with Britt Baker and her goons as well. And Britt's all like, man, I'm so happy the TBS championship has been invented because now people can stop obsessing about me. Makes sense. And then AEW did what they always do. They looked at the situation and they picked the simplest option. They picked the best option. They picked the most satisfying option and they picked the most entertaining option. This was brilliant. But it was the ladder match to see not only who was going to become the number one contender for the AEW world title, but also who was the Joker going to be. Because we knew that we were going to have Pac and John Moxley and Andrade and Matt Hardy and Orange Cassidy and Lance Archer. But there was somebody else who had to come out to win the day. And that's right. It was Hangman Adam Page. And when this did happen, I swear, love just came out of my tum tum and then zoomed back right into my face. I felt so good. The pairings for this were great as well because we start with Pac and Orange Cassidy and we know they've got a history. And then in at number three was Andrade who hates Pac. So all these guys just started to kick each other's ass. Matt Hardy was in at number four and he's just so maniacal these days. I get such a kick out of him. But of course he wants to shave Orange Cassidy's head. So once again, we were just taking all the scenes that we had planted and ensured they grew into plants. Number five was Lance Archer. And honestly, this mother Hubbard wrecked everybody. And I actually think this went down during the break, which was really sad because it was an absolute riot. I mean, he came out with a stage hand that he was basically using as a sword. You know how we call Lance Archer the murder hawk monster? It ain't just a nickname. He means it. He wants people to die. Boxley was out next and he was just throwing chairs at everybody. And it was this stage that we started to use ladders. I mean, there was a bunch of crazy spots. And then we did Built to the Joker. Like I've already said, it was Hangman Adam Page. It was just beautiful. It was just lovely. The crowd was so pleased to see him. He will always be the true hero of AEW. I think this was doubly true because it soon dawned on you what AEW was going to do, which meant you knew what match we were going to get. And he was just kicking everybody's ass. He took out Orange Cassidy. He took out Andrade. And amazingly, it was Pac that stopped him after he smashed him with a weapon. This didn't last very long, though, because eventually the hangman and Pac, look, I'm doing it again, were on top of a ladder. And the cowboy gave Pac the dead eye from the top through a table. And I am amazed that Pac is still able to walk. If you are not intending to watch it, at least go and see this spot. I, I don't know even how to describe it. What is wrong with professional wrestlers? Hardy then basically did the same because he hit Orange Cassidy with a leg drop from the ladder through another table. And given that his back was screwed up years ago, I was like, Matt, what are you doing? Please protect yourself. And then back in the ring, Lance Archer took out Mox. It looked like he was about to climb, but the hangman was having none of that. And he ensured he didn't. He did that too by just slamming him with the buckshot lariat. So I was just going, ah, because I was having such a good time. And if you can believe it, this led to a war of words and a war of fists between John Moxley and Hangman Adam Page. John Moxley got booed. Now, people weren't booing because, oh, I don't like you, John Moxley. But they were like, damn it, John. If you stop the cowboy right here, right now, we will never forgive you. But look what we've done here, too. You can absolutely do a few between these two at some point, And people clearly are going to buy into it. That isn't what happened on this night, though, because Page was able to shrug off all these punches. He knocked John Moxley to the floor and he grabbed that giant poker chip, which means he is now the number one contender and can go get his revenge against Kenny Omega and all of those ass holes this is exactly what we should be doing i mean it's perfect it truly is and who doesn't want to see it stupid people that's who stupid people even hangman's lower third was great he was like oh man look who finally showed back up to work so you know what overall 
it is getting it up. Which brings us to the end of the show, and you're probably now going, wait a minute, Simon, you didn't give any of that a golden up. What is wrong with you, you bald piece of shit? Well, it's nice and simple, because when I did get to the end of the show, I decided we really got to put a crowning moment on this, so overall, it doesn't just get an up, but kapow, it gets a golden up. Honestly, this was such a good AEW Dynamite. I am officially looking forward to every single episode, and you guys fire and you're so biased. I tell you what I'm biased towards, entertainment, and I'm biased towards having fun. Golden up. Now, please do leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's AEW Dynamite. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head on over to whatculture.com where you can keep up to date with all the latest wrestling news. Make sure you come say hello and give us a follow on social media. And we have all the ups and downs where we watch wrestling so you don't have to. My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you for tuning in as always. Make sure you have yourself a lovely little day, and I'll see you soon.